And, uh, and uh, Ricky, could I have a hit of your, of your soda water? No problem. Thank you. All right, good. Bad boy, everybody. Wow, good audience. I hadn't realized all you guys were back there. <laughs> you don't have eyes in the back of your head? Hmm? You don't have eyes in the back of your head? Yes, he no, does. No, but I read, I read some, I, mean, I read today, just today I read that there's some people that have the, the ability to know that there are people behind them. Yeah. And, some um, people who know, have the ability to know there are people in front of them. I know, I know. <laughs> Not me. All right. Uh, I know that I get to be in a better mood. Um, I'm Mark Schwartz, uh, in the process of trying to be a writing candidate for mayor in Berkeley, and I have my political resume in case anybody wants it. This is about um, a chick I met at the Occupy movement who I fell in love with. A what? Fell in no, love with. Fell in love. You know what a chick. A woman. A woman. A woman. A woman. Isn't this the Beat Museum? Come on, man. A woman. <laughs> They're called broads, broads. Exactly. No one Ava, you're here. Jeez. Oh, Ava and I just went to um, the Santa Rosa two days ago, which is where the um, 100,000 Poets for Peace began. Change. It changed? No, okay. 100,000 poets for change. change. Oh, for change. change. There we go. Damn, yeah. man. Change, you know? yeah, yeah, right. Give me a quad, advance. Yeah, right. Peace is good, too. All right. Uh, now I feel a little bit uh, queasy. You want some hot water? <laughs> um, want some real water? <laughs> real water? What's real water? Opposed to what he has. All right. All right. Well, all right. All right. Okay. I always teach three things. Uh, two things from my book on Third Street, Jack Carrack, we visited. Uh, which Lawrence Ferlinghetti says is my best title. 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 He said title. I said title. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, in coming here, I noticed that the Fed, the protest, the Fed, um, is no longer there. They fenced off the entire area. Yeah, they raided it. Yeah. Again. Ago. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, it was the heat of the Occupy movement when we were at the Fed. Tents were strong and numerous at Bradley Manning Plaza and 200 people were participating in the general assemblies. At the end of the meeting, there stood a hippie chick who stood in a wavering, flowing cotton dress of subdued colors, acting enthusiastically about trying to get kitchen help. She passed me by twice and was so young and beautiful, I nervously said, you're very appealing, in reference to how she could attract attention. When we realized it meant how attractive she was to me, she laughed. Lindsay Miller. The night of the riot, the night of the riot police, it was imperative that I store my backpack. I asked Lindsay if I could store it in her tent. She obliged. As soon as the backpack went in, a hippie man quietly came out. Lindsay Miller hugged all the women. At GA's, she was the one that led giving hand signals in response to proposals. With her, I, feel, I felt like Humber in Lolita. <laughs> At one point, she led us to City Hall. Mike and his dog and Zoe were there. Uh, and, well, let me just have a side reference to Zoe. Zoe just so, she showed up at the annual anniversary. Uh, she was the one that defended Bradley Manning Plaza by a battling with a police officer over a barricade and received nine stitches, including deep, two deep gushes. Mike and his dog and Zoe were there in the march as well as our lawyer, Bell Starr, and Robbie, our finance working group leader. Yes, the movement had leader, has leaders. Days later, when I wanted to discuss the appropriateness of tents with the city attorney, I asked her if she wanted to go to City Hall with me and realized I was asking her for marriage in a metaphoric way. <laughs> she giggled. I love her and want to be with her, want to be with her for the rest of my life, but I am alone in my solitudes crowded with loneliness. That, that's a quote from Bob Kaufman. So I cry and feel love and am blessed by her spirit. For Christmas, I bought her a peace brass bracelet made from the copper wires of the nuclear weapons machinery. I gave it to her on January 10th, 2012, when she appeared at the Cafe Mediterranean in Berkeley. This was after I winked seven times at a picture of Ron Paul, mesmerized that Lindsay was there, 
and realized I had my book for her on Third Street, Jack Kerouac Revisited, a book of poetry in which she was influential in writing my bio. She journeyed to Colorado, came back and paraded a sign she made while I talk about how bad the police have been along a, lo a line of riot gear police officers. So social media's were, pictures were taken. Then a man in a suit chatted us saying that we didn't want to work and only Lindsay would dart after him and I follow. We talk of our desires to be on a farm, picking grapes and whatever else. She loves puppies and I love her being with puppies. I want to win the lottery so I can provide for her and house homeless people. <laughs> it takes $3 million to house 180 homeless people. I will always feel love for her. I even asked her silently if she wanted to go to bed with me and she, re <laughs> <laughs> and she responded, can he ask me this at a general assembly meeting? <laughs> I'm waiting for her to turn, to return. <laughs> I want her badly and want her to be my lover. I want to have children with her and hope she'll stay as the young spirited woman I met at Occupy. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah.